Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes, and welcome to Volume 3 in our series of Register Key and Fingering Fundamentals for the Clarinet. In this volume, we're going to build our range from low E right up to E above high C, and thereby complete a three octave range on the clarinet. To build on where we got to in Volume 2, you'll remember we got to the point of being able to play an F chromatic scale starting on low F, then use the register key and play a C chromatic scale which took us right up to high C. The first note we need to learn to fill in the missing gaps in our three octave fingering is the lowest note on the B flat clarinet and that's low E. So if you think of your F fingering all you've got to do is engage the inside of those two long spatula keys on your left hand little finger and grab the inside of the two. Remember we learnt that that, was, that turned F to F sharp, so if we now go for the other alternate spatula key, that will drop F down a semitone and make it sound like low E. <laughs> Now, if you also notice on the clarinet down here, the low E key closes off the final hole that's drilled into the clarinet before it gets to the bell. So the longest possible length of tubing before the air can escape out the front of the bell is closed off, is created by the left hand little finger engaging the low E. If you play the bass clarinet, the bass clarinet goes down one semitone lower than that. There's an E-flat key on the standard bass clarinet, and there are some bass clarinets which extend right down to low C. So they also have other keys where you can play E-flat, D, D-flat, and low C. However, right across the clarinet family, low E is the most common uh, of, of the low range of the clarinets, and certainly for the B-flat clarinets, the most common clarinets, that is the lowest note that you can hit. Okay, so we've sorted out the low extension from what we did in volume two. We've now got to fill in the gap between this note F that we hit and the start of where E with the register key, which will create the note B. So the 12th note in an E scale is a B. And if we play that low E, then put the register key on, we actually get the third line B. So if you think of your five lines in the music stave, the middle line is the note B, and on the clarinet, our lowest fingering E plus the register key changes low E, which is right below the ledger lines, but still in the treble clef, up to third line B. So let's just listen to that again, low E to third line B. All done with just the register key. So what we've got to do now is fill in the gap between F that we know how to play and the new note B with the register key. So we've got the notes F to F sharp, and there's two ways to play that. Let's, let's look at the conventional way first. F sharp is normally played on the clarinet by just the index finger on its own on the first key on the left hand. So here's F, and here's F sharp. So that's a swap between the left hand thumb being on for F, then it comes off and the index finger goes down for F sharp. Okay, there is an alternate way to play that. And in a chromatic scale, many people like to play this alternate fingering, which I'll show you. So normal F, you play the thumb F. And then instead of just the one bottom trill key on the right hand side, with your index finger on your right hand, you have to engage the two lower of the four. There's four right hand keys there. The two lower ones, the bottom ones, both at the same time. So if you play normal thumb F, then put both of those keys on, it'll change F to F sharp. Let's have a listen. I'll play it the standard way. Sounds almost identical. But this way, the standard way is quite clumsy and it's not really built for speed, particularly if you had to play an F to F sharp trill. It's virtually impossible to do it using the standard fingerings. And that's why these keys were added to the clarinet. 
A trill is just a really rapid movement between two notes. So if we had to go F to F sharp quickly, it's much easier to do that than to try and go you know, it's really hard and just about impossible to move quickly there. So most clarinetists in a chromatic scale will use the F plus the two right hand side keys to in, in their run from F to F sharp to G. G is just no fingers pressed at all. So this is G. Nothing down. G sharp is just this key here on the left hand and again it's hit with the inside of our index finger. We don't point at it, we just hit it with the side of our index finger. So I'll play G and then I'll play G sharp. The next note up is A and that's this key here, this teardrop sort of key on the very front of the clarinet. It's just depressed on its own, so just that key on its own changes G sharp to A. Now you'll notice how I'm sort of just bending my index finger across to hit that G sharp. I then bend the front of my tip of my finger across to press that A down. I'll play G, G sharp and A for you. All done with the index finger on the left hand. The next note after A, the one missing note now is A sharp or B flat. So we hold the A key on and then on the back we depress the register key on its own. So just those two keys pinched together. A on the front, register key on the back. We do not hold our thumb over the F tone hole. It's just a matter of the A key plus the register key. So I'll play A and then I'll put the register key on and that will be A sharp. So let's just go over those notes the, the, from G, G sharp, A and A sharp are called the throat tones on the clarinet because there's very little of the length of the pipe engaged. They can sound a little bit thin if you're not careful because the notes, the holes are being opened up very close up to the top of the, where the mouthpiece is and there's not much body in the notes being you know, transferred down the lower part of the clarinet. Hence they're called throat tones. So just be careful, don't let them become thin or nasally, just be conscious of trying to play those notes with as full a sound as you can. So I'll go over all the new notes we've learnt so far in, in this tutorial. Low E fingering, like F but with our left hand little finger engaged on the inside of the two big spatula keys. Remember low E. And then the new notes were from F sharp. So, and today we'll play it using the chromatic fingering F sharp. If you are playing a melody in the key of G major or in, in most of the easy keys, you would just play the normal front F sharp fingering. Okay, but because we're playing a chromatic scale, let's today use the proper chromatic fingering. So for F sharp, we'll play F plus the two bottom right hand side keys. Then G, nothing. G sharp over here on the left hand side, just the one key, this big key here. So G to G sharp. G sharp to A, just the front key on its own. You don't hold the G sharp key down, get rid of the G sharp key and play the A. Hold the A key down and then engage the register key, but don't cover the hole on the back and that turns A into A sharp or B flat. The next note up is B, but we've already learnt that B is the same as the low E fingering plus the register key. Okay, so low E, put the register key on, it becomes B. Now from there on in, if you think back to volume two, you all already know how to get your way up from C up to high C. We covered that in volume two. So now you can play from low E all the way up to high C. Let's just try that. Let me play it and just watch my fingers as we go and then we'll discuss it further. Okay, 
So we played from low E right up to high C. And you can rewind this video and just have a look at those fingerings. They're all the fingerings we discussed. And I used the chromatic alternate fingerings on, on all occasions as I played that. Because the speed I was playing at it, you might have noticed I had to grab a very quick breath um, somewhere up around. I think I, I took the breath after the B. The quicker you play it, you'll be able to play that on one breath. But when we play it slow, there's a lot of notes there. Don't be scared to take a breath uh, and make sure you do take a breath because don't get all concentrating on the fingerings and pass out because you forgot to breathe. Okay, the final frontier now to get to our third octave is above high C. We need to find a way to play high C sharp, high D, high D sharp and high E. Again, there are some alternate fingerings up here, and we'll discuss a few um, as we go along. Let's look at the standard fingerings first. C sharp is played by having the second and third finger on the left hand covering the holes, and the first and second on the right hand. So it's fingers two and three on the left, one and two on the right. That will change the pitch of high C, upper semitone, to high C sharp. Again, we're up in the really high range here. We're starting what they call the altissimo register, the very high register on the clarinet. So as I said in volume two, if your embouchure strength isn't quite where it needs to be, Go back and go through that exercise that I've got in another tutorial called Building Embouchure Strength for Wind Instrument Players. Work through that process. Don't be in a hurry to play these extreme high notes. You'll only hurt your lip, probably cut your lip or even bruise it if your strength in your embouchure isn't where it needs to be to play these high notes. Okay, the next note up from C sharp is D, D, above high C. It's an easy change. There's C sharp. We lift up our third, our middle finger on our right hand. We just lift that finger up and we've got fingers two and three on the left and finger one on the right. That'll change C sharp to D. So let's go back to C. We'll play. We'll gradually build these notes. We'll go C, C sharp to D. And I recommend for these real high notes that if you're new to them, hold them out. Every time you go to the next step up, the next semitone out, hold that note out maybe for four seconds, five, six, seven, eight seconds. Just really get used to the new frontier on your high range. Okay, the next note is D sharp or E flat. Now the standard fingering is this. So we swap from that's D and we just swap fingers on the right hand. So we just end up with fingers two and three on the left and the middle finger on the right. That's the standard way to play high D sharp or E flat. I'll play it using that fingering. Then we'll talk about an alternative, which I prefer. Okay. Okay, that's a good in tune D sharp and that is the conventional fingering. The alternate I prefer is the same fingering as the chromatic F to F sharp or, you know, A sharp to B. Remember in volume two, we talked about that being an alternate fingering down low using this skinny little trill key on the right hand. So my preferred fingering for the high D sharp or E flat is to play the high D fingering and then engage that trill key. And I'll just play that alternate fingering for you. For me, it just speaks easier. It's a, I think it's a bigger sound and it's probably a little bit better, more in tune on most clarinets. High E fingering is we simply lift up our right hand and we just have the second and third finger down on our left hand gives us our high E, which completes our three octave range. So I'll just finish on that. I'll go C, C sharp, D, D sharp and end on high E. It's 
a very high note. And you've now got at least one fingering, and we've talked about some alternates along the way, to play the full three octaves on the B-flat clarinet from low E below the music stave. So a circle and three ledger lines above it is low E, still in the treble clef, to high E above the ledger line. So that's a circle, a ledger line through the circle, and then two ledger lines below it. Um, you know, there's many wind instruments where it's an absolute struggle to play three octaves. But on the clarinet, if you work hard and if you go over these three tutorials, the main thing is, is to have the strength in your embouchure before you try and play too high. There's nothing to be gained by pushing too high, too hard, too fast. So if you have done the exercise I prescribe in the embouchure building tutorial, if you can hold that pen for at least one minute in a horizontal position, well then you have got enough embouchure strength to attempt these notes. If you can't hold the pen for at least 60 seconds, keep working on that exercise before you try any of these notes above high C. Okay, look, I really hope that's been of some help to you. You've got all the fingerings. You've, you've, been, you've seen how it can be played. It's a matter of now piecing all that together slowly. We've only called the notes largely sharps on the way up. Be aware that every one of those sharps can be called a flat. So on the way down, you know, E to D sharp, we can refer to that as E to E flat. D to C sharp becomes D to D flat. And we might do another tutorial on understanding the difference between the sharps and the flats. For the moment, the main thing is, is you have a set of fingerings and you've, you know, you've been through a process where you understand what the register key does on the clarinet. We've also talked about what's involved to get those notes, the right airspeed, the right embouchure strength, the right fingering, the right tongue level. Give it a go. Stick with it. The clarinet's an amazing instrument. And if you can play right up to high E above high C, the vast majority of music that you want to play falls within that range. The clarinet does go up higher. Uh, they're, some of the great players were famous for being able to play right up to double high C, just as effortlessly as a normal player might play in the lowest range. But for the moment, concentrate on that three octave range, and we'll look at expanding that even further in a later video. Okay, I hope that's been of help. Keep in touch via my website. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you've got any questions, drop me an email and have fun exploring the three octave chromatic range on the clarinet. Bye for now.